The statement of meeting procedures, please. Welcome to the Fox County Board's Supervisory Meeting of October, Monday, October 18, 2010. Agendas are available on the wall, on the chair in the back of this meeting room. If you are here to speak on an issue not appearing on the agenda, you do so during the public comment period. There is a three-minute time limit per speaker. The board is not permitted to take action on items addressed under public comment. When you speak, clearly state your name and address for the record. All items on the agenda will be open for the public to address before final action is taken. There's a three minute time limit per speaker, which will be monitored by a timer on the podium. If there is a person speaking on behalf of the group, if member is if no other testimony from another member of the group, please identify yourself as such and your time may be extended at the pleasure of the board. Keep in mind that the chairman has discretion to limit the total discussion time on any item. If you are hearing impaired, we have listening devices available. It is requested that all pagers and cell phones be either turned off or put in the silent mode. Thank you for your participation and cooperation. Thank you, Ann. Any members of the public wish to address the board at this time? All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. Before we begin our first item on the agenda, we have a request by County Council to add an item to closed session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, subsequent to the publication of the agenda, I became aware of some information that uh, puts the county at risk of significant exposure. And I'm under Government Code Section 54956.9, subparagraph B. I would like the board to add something <coughs> to the closed session items. It would be item number C under your item number five on page two, anticipated litigation. I re re does recall that. Okay, we, uh, we have a motion, Second. Supervisor Holmes, second, Supervisor Rockholm, to add the item. It does require a four-fifths vote, uh, so roll call, please. Holmes? Yes. Rockholm? Yes. Wygant? Yes. Montgomery? Yes. Aye. Aye. All right, thank you very much. The agenda is so modified. And uh, we do have a minute or two before our first time item. So why don't we go ahead, Mr. Kratz. We'll go ahead and take your item. This is uh, Public Works uh, Lake Tahoe Capital Improvement Project Program status. Information item only, no action request of the board. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the board. Peter Kratz again, Deputy Director of Public Works. And give me a second here and we'll get our presentation up and running. Over on the to the right. Okay. All right, here again to present um, an update for you for Public Works for all the things that we're doing up in the basin and eastern Placer County. A lot of things going on for Public Works this year. I'd, I'd call it a watershed year. Kind of going back in time a little bit since 1984, Public Works has built over 50 erosion control projects up in the basin. Um, and up this year, we have actually have seven on the ground. You had a chance to tour a few of them today. Two of them are like the Lake Forest Erosion Control Project and the Transit Center. So that's two of what we've been doing out of seven this year. Uh, just to take you through my outline real quick today is to, again, update you on the board on, on what we're doing and kind of go back 25 years when we started this whole process and highlight the projects currently under uh, construction and emphasize really the partnering that we do up here to make these projects work, not just from regulatorily, but obviously the funding. All of these projects are, are pretty much 90% plus funded from grant sources. We do s use some traffic impact fees to build some of these projects, but, but for the most part, California Tile Conservancy, U.S. Forest Service, um, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, cobbling a lot of funding sources, working together and working with the agencies to make these projects happen. And really talk about at the end, emphasize that the future does remain bright, even under these economic times that we're in. Uh, federal funding and state funding continues to occur. The, uh, the emphasis on Lake Tahoe Clarity is a big, big for us up here, as you'll hear from other agencies today, I'm sure. Uh, quickly, the seven projects we've got under construction uh, this summer uh, 
are up there with their various construction budgets. Uh, the numbers are a little bit higher on the construction budget side, like today you heard uh, Lake Forest was 3.2 million. I didn't account for a lot of the construction management time that goes into watching over these projects and doing the construction inspection. So we really, we have projects going from Nevada State Line over in Kings Beach all the way over almost to Tahoma uh, along the west shore where you see the McKinney Rubicon Trail Enhancement Project. And what I'd like to do is just highlight these projects through some photos um, from here through the rest of the presentation. Uh, the first one off to the east side near the state line that you didn't see today, but it's in the grid part, the residential part of Kings Beach. It's called the Fox Queen Water Pipe Project. It's a $2.2 million construction budget. It's actually near one of the Domus redevelopment sites um, near the, the, the warming, the house warming that you went to was off to the west. This one is near uh, one of the, of the three sites, the second site of Domus. And it was really a partnering effort, too, with both the no North Tahoe PUD and Domus. Um, they've got some of their improvements right on this street on Fox that we are actually doing some of their improvements uh, and being able to tie their stormwater into our main infrastructure, so a, a great opportunity there. Typically, with these kinds of projects, with the PUDs, we work with the PUDs ahead of time to make sure that um, if they've got aging infrastructure or they need to do things, um, we go, we let them go in there while we're ripping the streets up so we're not ripping up the streets up over and over again by different agencies. So this probably, this project this summer is probably the most impactful to the community because it's a real tight neighborhood back there. A lot of people walk around. We have a fairly challenging contractor. Uh, we're getting the job done though. Uh, you didn't have a chance to get over here, but this is Fox. And on Fox and then on Salmon, we actually have new roads, new pavement. That's about a, a mile of um, pipeline that was constructed from the top of the neighborhood all the way down to the lake. And the idea is, and we've mentioned this before to your board, is taking all the clean stormwater above the neighborhood and piping it underground all the way to the lake so it doesn't mix with all the dirty urban water in the grid. And that reduces the hydraulic load and makes our job easier when we do our commercial core project. We're treating less water. We're just we're treating the bad water and a smaller volume of it. Our next project, moving to the west, is what you saw today a little bit on our tour, the Lake Forest Erosion Control Project, $2.9 million project budget. Uh, like we've talked, innovative and multi-beneficial stream environment zone restoration effort. Uh, again, just highlighting what we did up there, there was a creek, a, there is a creek known as Lake Forest Creek that was piped underground back in the 60s during uh, some development of what's called the Lakes, Lake Forest Glen condominium development. And it really dried out the meadow area, one of the few big meadow areas that we have in Placer County. And so we took the opportunity over the last several years of planning to um, established partnerships with the Conservancy for funding. It's mostly their land out in this meadow and really go forth with a, a neat restoration project which is a little bit different than we typically do where we're in the streets doing curb and gutter. And uh, I think all of you had a chance to see some of this. Um, and these are just some shots from the beginning up at the top where you see um, just the channel being constructed with no vegetation and then the vegetation mats coming in. And then the sod, which much of the sod is um, salvaged from existing um, vegetation in the area and relocated. So a really neat project for us, and it also adds an element of recreation and pedestrian access and flood control, which is a big thing for this project as well. Our next project, Tahoe City Transit Center, you saw this today as well. Some construction photos here from back at the beginning of site grading earlier this year. Um, uh, the pad down here that you saw close up, a lot more to it now that you saw about an hour ago with the, um, the heated pad that we'll have for snow melt. Uh, the green facility that we talked about with uh, photovoltaic cells on the roof, um, harvesting the precipitation for irrigation and for the toilets. And then really back to what this project is all about, it's, 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 a, it's a strategic location at existing hiking trails, bike routes, and within walking distance of Tahoe City, it's got the 130 space parking lot for transit riders, plus people that really just come to Tahoe City and want to either hike, bike, walk, and enjoy the community to off to the west, or off to the east, rather. Um, $4.7 million construction budget, obviously encourages 
bus riders and enhances our overall TARP bus transit system throughout the North Shore and West Shore and that links into Truckee and Washoe County as well. A couple other si shots here. Real, we're very sensitive, of course, with all of our projects of protecting the existing vegetation around the site, as you saw out there today on your tour and some shots here um, just showing how we have to protect a lot of things out there and our tree take was as minimal as we can be. Again, a small footprint over a big chunk of forest there known as the 64 acre uh, plot that's owned by the Forest Service. Two and a half acre over total footprint includes the building, uh, the bus turnaround area and the parking lot. And just to note that you know, part of our schedule has been slowed up a bit on construction. We kind of knew this going in, but it, it's not a pristine site. There was, a form, there was former development there. In fact, old, an old landfill sites where the ground was very soft, where we pulled out old bottles, old historical stuff. We have to have an archaeologist on site to check this stuff out. That slowed us down a little bit. A lot of soft ground that we've had to over-excavate and recompact to get uh, a sturdy surface out there. And then just uh, kind of context where we are. Um, you, were, you guys were all, and ladies were all standing about here looking at the depot site, the parking lot behind there, and you got to get a sense of there is a big land, a chunk of land out there that's really going to remain open space um, with bike trails that run through there and uh, make their way over to Tahoe City and to the, to the west shore along the existing bike, class one bike routes. And again, a little bit closer up, we're over in this area standing in, on our former tour, turnaround area, parking lot area, and the remaining open space. You saw this, I think, on a handout, just a typical cross-section of what the finished product will look like out at the transit center. And some perspectives here of daytime, wintertime, and I think how it'll look at night. Okay. Moving on, it's a project you didn't have a chance to see today, but another one we're very proud of. It's called the West Sunnyside Erosion Control Project, $1.7 million budget really provides both flood control and water quality improvements in Ward, Ward Canyon. Uh, there's a subdivision known as Talmont, which is up on a very st steep-sided topography built back in the 60s without a lot of thought of how the water flows off the Talmont subdivision in a very uncontrolled manner. A lot of big, heavy erosion we've experienced over the last, ever since it was built, and we're finally addressing it through this project, which is a very large detention basin being constructed here in, again, a conservancy-owned property um, that we then transformed it into this basin, which is now completed. It takes about 1,000 thousand feet of pipeline from Tal the Talmont subdivision above this area and routes the stormwater down into this basin in here and provides downstream flood control because we have a lot of development down here before the water reaches Ward Creek. So again, more of a classic erosion control effort, but uh, one that we're very proud of, that we took, uh, took the opportunity of using conservancy land uh, to deal with this uncontrolled uh, runoff and flooding that occurs in this area. Uh, moving on back to TART a little bit, uh, what we've been in, uh, engaging in in the last couple of, couple of years is really looking at our bus shelter system of the fact that we don't have a lot of bus shelters in many places and ones in, that are dilapidated and since last year, we've built, uh, we're up to building six now, either replacing um, old ones or putting in new ones where we didn't have a shelter before. So here's a quick snapshot of where we are last year. We've got the two in Squaw Valley that you may have seen that were built last year. And then this year, just down the road to the south of us, we have two in the Sunnyside area that are about done. Um, we have another one in the Lake Forest area you might have seen as you traveled from Kings Beach in this direction. And then one over on National Avenue in Tahoe Vista, which is a very busy site. It's actually being, uh, we're partnering with the uh, NTPUD, North Tahoe PUD, on the recreation site by the lake. So, and this program will continue. We're very fortunate to have such a solid relationship with the North Tahoe Resort Association to get funding for this program. Moving on to up on the summit, outside the basin quickly, we're in the middle of doing the Donner Summit Slope Rehabilitation Project with a $395,000 budget. It's a treatment of an old road cut made when they built the highway way back when. 
with a 65 high eroding cut that sheds a lot of sediment into the South Yuba River water watershed. Um, and you can see some photos here before, get a sense of this huge cut that you can see from all over the place if you're skiing at Sugar Bowl or accessing that area right off the highway. And these are some shots now of stabilizing that slope, building a rock, rock wall system um, with drainage behind here, and then this will, will follow up with vegetation and really reduce the sediment load that's impacting uh, the South Yuba River. And this was funded through the Sierra Nevada Conservancy grant, and we look to do more up there. Um, if you have a chance, when you go back down the hill to Auburn, you can go out on Old Highway 40 and take a look at what's going on up there. And then finally, our final project is really kind of a long-term maintenance effort that we do in what's called the, on the McKinney Rubicon Recreation Trail. We've come to your board before on, on how we interface with the Forest Service. Most of this trail is on Forest Service land, but it's a, it's a trail that we did improvements on way back in the early 90s for water quality protection of Lake Tahoe. It's an ongoing effort. Um, we, we have a lot of four-wheel drive user groups that love to use this trail, and we have uh, a couple of groups that are very proactive and wanting to educate users and making sure they stay on the trail. And we look for opportunities to continue to work with this group and do things like fill in major potholes like this that fill in with water and cause erosion. This is an aftershot of this section where we filled in with, with some fill. This is fill that actually came from, I think, our Lake Forest project. We had a lot of excess material from Lake Forest and some of our other projects, and so instead of sending it to the landfill, um, essentially used this excess fill and hauled it up to the McKinney Rubicon site to do these improvements. And our final shot there is just, um, here's before, big ponded area, and this is the same shot, same perspective, filled in with fill, same here, this is a big ponded area and filled in. And then just moving on from all the projects we've been doing this summer, Heard a lot about this, came to your board a few weeks ago to get our contract signed, our design contract. Obviously our biggest notable contract in, or project in design right now, the Kings Beach Commercial Core Improvement Project. Uh, we had a kickoff meeting uh, with uh, the consultants last week to s schedule everything, hope to break ground on this project next summer, probably not on the highway, but do some of the grid improvements affiliated with this project. So we're very excited about the future, this, this type project, and uh, another project of note is the North Tahoe Bike Trail project, which is about an eight mile section between here and our Dollar Point and downtown or uh, a regional park at uh, National Avenue. So it's a new pro another notable project for Public Works to carry on and do these types of improvement projects in the basin. And a final note, just to say a lot of partners for uh, for public works that we work with continually in the basin. This is most of them. There are more, what I probably don't have up here, what I should is the uh, Tahoe City Downtown Association. But these folks are either, and sometimes a combination of regulatory funding um, and just advocates for our projects. And without the partnerships that we've built over time here, we just, I wouldn't be here today talking about seven projects happening all at once. So with that happy, uh, very proud to be here in front of you and give you a snapshot and an update on everything that we're doing up here in, in Placer County. Our group of engineers is very proud of what we do. We, we take everything um, seriously. We want to build good projects and uh, keep the community happy so, and keep the lake clear and move in that, continue to move in that direction. With that, happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank, you. thank you, Peter. Any board members have any questions of Peter on any of our capital improvement projects? All right, seeing none, this is not an action item, no actions requested to the board today. However, if any members of the public have any questions or comments on any of these projects, be happy to take those now as well. All right, seeing none, thank you very much, Peter, for your report. Thank you. Okay. We'll go ahead and move on to our 240 timed item. We're going to adjourn as the Placer County Board of Supervisors and reconvene as the Placer County Re Planning and Redevelopment Agency, excuse me, just find it, Placer County Redevelopment Agency and uh, hear a report from Mr. Lagu on the status of North Lake Tahoe Redevelopment Project Area. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Redevelopment Agency. Can you yeah. hear it okay? Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm going to give you uh, an overview of the, the most active projects, the main activities going on. But before that, I, I wanted to just point out uh, a little description of 
part of the work that we're doing right now is really examining our budgets and our finances uh, in november uh, we're planning to bring you the final budget for this year uh, and getting ready for that we're, we're getting the numbers ready to be able to make that presentation so uh, everything that we're doing uh, we are doing in the context of how do we pay for all this um, so uh, that is especially an issue this year because of certain things that have been happening in the last year or two um, the first one uh, many peating, competing project demands that's not a new issue uh, we've been dealing with that for some time but uh, the, the list keeps growing uh, we have a wish list of projects that different organizations different individuals different property owners and ourselves sometimes we dream up these things ourselves uh, keep coming up with and there and, and most of them are very good ideas very good proposals that would indeed improve the area uh, here in our North Chicago redevelopment project areas but uh, can't pay for everything um, this year we are seeing as the final numbers have uh, recently come in that for the first time in our history our tax increment revenue has actually declined uh, that's never happened before uh, in the early years obviously we didn't have much so even an increase didn't you know we still didn't have much but now that we built up uh, some reserves and, and we were able to issue bonds in 2006 uh, we've been taking on more implementation responsibilities and doing more spending more of course uh, but now for the first time seeing that uh, the curve doesn't forever go up this this year it's going down in North Tahoe the decline is not uh, dramatic it's uh, less than five percent uh, other areas, uh, the uh, decline, the Sunset area in particular, uh, it's going down more. And we will be uh, presenting additional information, like I said to you, with the final budget. CRAF, uh, the state came up with this uh, wonderful acronym to as a, as a way to get at our revenues. So between last year, we uh, gave to the state over $3.2 million of commercial tax increment funds, about 2.3 million of that came from the North Tahoe area. Uh, this year, we're, uh, by next May, we're due to pay them another $670,000 or so. So it, it, it just puts a challenge that with everything we're doing, we need to be really uh, looking at the numbers and seeing what can we afford and how do we go about this in a smart way. So we have adopted certain strategies. Uh, we are continuing to support the projects that uh, your board has approved up till now and we have not ditched any uh, significant projects for lack of funding and we are continuing with those uh, some of the main ones as you know you've already committed 11 million dollars to the CCIP project in Kings Beach and those funds are still being uh, set aside and held for that purpose and other projects in the works you're going to hear about a number of them tomorrow uh, with action items on your agenda um, we have economized on operations. We have a couple of uh, vacant staff positions that we've held vacant for uh, over a year now, and we will continue to do so and look for ways to do more with less. Uh, selectively support new initiatives, uh, and we get proposals all the time, and uh, there may be some that uh, you decide that you do want us to uh, invest in in the future and and that may be possible but uh, we do have to be selective and, and think about that uh, where we do have some available funds is in our bond our commercial bond for uh, North Tahoe where we have approximately three million dollars that's not spoken for uh, pursue outside grants and par partnerships we've been very aggressive with this approach and we have been successful in a number of areas in Tahoe as well as in North Auburn uh, receiving grants from the state uh, and in some cases we've gotten some uh, very, uh, loans on very good terms such as from IBANC and we, can con we will continue to look at those opportunities and then consider financing options um, it, it would may behoove us to uh, get creative in terms of how to um, use our funds uh, wisely uh, I think there's going to be an item on your agenda tomorrow about uh, borrowing funds from one project area for 
which has a surplus at the, at the current time, will need the funds in the, in the future, but not immediately. And uh, having another project area ha which has a more immediate need to borrow those funds, pay them back with interest uh, by the time that those funds are needed. Um, we do want to, uh, going back a little bit to the uh, supporting new initiatives, we do want to uh, think about uh, how we can, in, a, in, a, in an intelligent way, leverage our funds. We like to do our projects in conjunction with other agencies, similar to Public Works. Uh, we, we do projects, and you're going to see one tomorrow with the PUD, another one with a property owner developer, uh, and we, we do other projects with other agencies. Uh, we want to, when the CCIP is uh, completed, we're very interested in following that up with a, an initiative to uh, encourage and assist private property owners and businesses to also do uh, improvements along that stretch of Highway 28 in Kings Beach. Uh, and so we're, we're trying to squirrel away some funds right now and plan about how we can do that. So uh, that program could be an aggressive program to really make a, a, a big uh, impact on that overall community's revitalization in, a, in building upon the public improvement of, of Highway 28. Uh, now to the projects. Uh, this is a project we just completed this year, two gateway signs to Tahoe City, um, both on Highway 88, 89, I'm sorry, from different approaches into Tahoe City. Um, it was mentioned that the, uh, the sign on the left uh, the landscaping looks unfinished, but uh, Caltrans is uh, providing hydro seeding uh, that uh, what looks like burlap, the netting on the slopes for erosion control, and uh, uh, the vegetation uh, is going to be growing that uh, with the uh, rains and the snow. Next slide. Uh, the Transit Cedar Center, Peter already talked about this. Uh, the Redevelopment Agency contributed. $500,000 to this project. Those funds were spent uh, on design and engineering work to help the project get started in the earlier phases. Uh, you're going to be seeing uh, an action tomorrow uh, to enter into uh, an agreement with the PUD for uh, improvements to the Tahoe Vista Recreation Area. This area is along National Avenue. This is Highway 28. The lake is over here. Uh, and you'll be, you'll be getting more of a report on this. But this is what is our funding, $500,000, which actually you've already approved in your budget, uh, would be going towards uh, providing uh, additional parking and uh, transit stop and other imp related improvements. Uh, we have a, an existing commercial loan program. And in the last year, we've made two loans. Uh, on the left is the Brock Brockway Golf Course. Uh, we helped them replace a uh, dilapidated uh, running rail fence, which uh, is a big improvement visually right now. And then uh, more Lattice Lakeshore Resort. Uh, we provided them a facade loan, which they have used to, to put in new uh, electronic locks and lighting. Deer Rainbow Parking Lot, uh, we just entered into, you approved an agreement uh, between us and the Public Works uh, a few meetings ago where Public Works is going to be taking over the management of this project and they're just beginning the initial steps of uh, designing the project uh, for building a, a both the parking lot and over here this is going to be uh, uh, an area for drainage to, to uh, capture uh, water and, and come down this uh, tail of the site in alongside a, a wooded uh, pedestrian trail would be a nice feature. BBLLC, there's an action on your uh, board agenda tomorrow as well. Uh, this project is moving forward again. It was stalled for a while. They were having issues first with TRPA and the consultant to do the EIR and then uh, with their financing and we've been working with the developer and with the banks who have the first mortgages on this uh, property uh, to come up with a new financing plan to keep this project moving ahead. Uh, they have restarted the EIR, EIS work, and that's moving along. Uh, Everett property, you have an item on your agenda tomorrow on this one. The Everett property is here along the south side of Highway 28. This is Coon Street. 
Fox Street, Chipmunk Street, uh, and we have acquired this site. The redevelopment agency owns it, and we have two projects planned. On the bottom part, uh, nearer to the lake, it's planned for uh, public parking, which would help uh, both the CCIP project mitigate uh, the loss of parking with that project, as well as uh, just help the overall commercial district. And on the northern portion of the property, we're proposing to issue RFPs to get proposals from developers to build a s relatively small uh, mixed-use project. Well, we will see what, once we get proposals if, if you want to uh, authorize that tomorrow. Eastern Gateway, uh, also on that same block at the far eastern end of that block at the corner of 28 and uh, Chipmunk Street, catty corner from the Domus uh, housing site. Uh, we have acquired through multiple uh, purchases uh, about 1.3 acres. Uh, we've gone through a series of community meetings. You'll be hearing more about that tomorrow as well. And we're now proposing to issue an RFP to get development proposals from that. And uh, the ceremony you were at this morning, um, this is what you didn't see, which what you would have seen a few weeks ago if you were on that deer site, an old rundown uh, motel converted into permanent housing that had definitely gone past its useful lifespan. We've been very active. This has been uh, largely a summer of demolition. We've been knocking down a lot of buildings on multiple sites uh, for both the Domus project and also the Eastern Gateway site. And all the demolition work is now completed. Uh, the sites are all buttoned up and BMP'd, ready for the uh, fall and winter weather. Uh, Domus uh, project has reached two milestones in addition this summer. Uh, one, uh, they were able to get full permits and do enough construction on two of the five sites, Fox and Brook, to be able to pour the foundations and actually work through the winter. The other three sites uh, will need to wait till next May next spring to be able to start that construction work. The other milestone reached is that uh, we just had a closing uh, a little over a week ago, uh, which was a very important step. It brought in about $15 million of construction funding from Wells Fargo Bank. It brought in the eventual uh, about $18 million of, of permanent money coming from the tax credit uh, investor and it also resulted in us transferring the property, the title to the property, all five sites from us, the redevelopment agency, to the developer. Uh, so we're no longer the proud owners of this blighted property. Uh, but it won't be blighted for long, it's already getting into it. Uh, and that's uh, what it's going to become for the sites. Um, we also have housing programs, uh, both uh, first time home buyer assistance loans and housing rehab loans. In the past year or so, we have done two uh, rehab loans in the North Tahoe area. The one on the right is a Beaver Street, uh, uh, a project that the PUD was also working in coordination with uh, Public Works to do improvements on Beaver Street. They put in a new main water line, and as a result, the individual houses on that street needed to tie into that line. Uh, there was one uh, household in particular that was low income, had a difficulty affording that tie-in, and we provided a uh, deferred uh, low, uh, payment loan uh, assisting them. And then on Bend Avenue, we're in the process of finishing up a uh, rehabilitation project, uh, which they were able to get a uh, favorable loan from us as well. That completes uh, the report. Questions by board members, Mr. LeVu, any other projects? All right, seeing none, again, this is not an action item for the redevelopment agency today. However, if any member of the public wishes to address the board or anything that's been presented, we'll take that now. All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and adjourn as the Placer County Redevelopment Board and reconvene as the Placer County Board of Supervisors in order to take up our, ten, our 250 at timed item, which is a report by the North Lake Tahoe Resort Association in regard to annual activities. Ms. Merchant, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Jennifer Merchant with the County Executive Office.
As you're aware, your board authorizes an annual agreement with the North Lake Tahoe Resort Association to make recommendations regarding allocation of TOT revenue for funding infrastructure projects, various visitor services, and to implement marketing programs to benefit tourism development. The fiscal year 2010 and 2011 agreement was approved by your board on September 14th in the amount of $4 million, $177,215. The Resort Association has prepared an annual report for you today as required in their contract of services. It will be presented today by Interim Executive Director Ron Trebus and Tourism Director Andy Chapman, um, who are both accompanied by several other key staff here today they may want to introduce um, to you. And I will be available after their report should you have any additional questions. Okay. Till then, here's Ron. Ron? I think you're up. Thank you all very much. Um, I had suggested to Jennifer that we do this presentation about five o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> <but> <laughs> That's the slightly embellished presentation that takes place right. at five. But we can handle any questions or other <laughs> concerns at that time. Um, as always, we appreciate this uh, opportunity to spree uh, speak directly to you after we've had particularly such a um, successful consummation of the 2010-11 agreement, which is the 16th year that Placer County and the Resort Association will have been working uh, together for the benefit of Eastern Placer County. Um, I would like to take a, a, a moment here at the start to introduce our board president, Alex Morilatos, who is here, and our um, very active board member, Jennifer Merchant, which I'm sure you all realize she's on the board, but uh, I realize it too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then in addition to that, though, I, I did ask our staff that was available today to come over when they when we were speaking this morning and they said they really hadn't uh, known who the Board of Supervisors were or ever met them. I assume then you hadn't met the staff. So at this time, if you guys would uh, just stand up. And I will from the back introduce Anna Atwood, who is our conference sales administrative assistant and next to Anna is Emily Sullivan marketing and chamber administrative assistant and then uh, Kim Lambert who is an accounting and executive uh, administrator Jeremy Jacobson who handles all of our leisure sales uh, clear around the globe and then Sally Lyon who is our chief uh, financial officer and human resources person and of course Andy Chapman our director of tourism and chamber advisor not with us today are Kim Fable, our chamber uh, director, Jason Neary, who handles our conference sales, and Shelley Webb and Dana Herlicky, who run our visitor center, and that's where they better be this afternoon. And Judy. Judy Laverty, is she here? Yeah. Judy yeah. is our special projects and special <laughs> events coordinator, and is a person who's been with the Resort Association for many years, and continues to do just a bang up job with every special need that we have. Great, thank you all, you're welcome. <laughs> while, while we are only uh, 12 employees strong, we do reach far and wide through the community and beyond interacting uh, with organizations, agencies, businesses, and the public to achieve our mission, which is really to promote tourism and benefit business through efforts that enhance the economic, environmental, recreational, and culture, cultural climate of the greater North Lake Tahoe area. Our main charge is to work closely with Placer County, providing you all with the outreach necessary to really ensure that proper expenditure of TOT funds for tourism development in North Lake Tahoe and Eastern Placer County takes place. Our second charge, which isn't directly related to you, but you should be aware of, is that as the North Lake Tahoe Chamber of Commerce, we promote and support business retention, economic sustainability, and stronger business community relationships and development. Our over 640 association cha chamber members have the responsibility to one, elect the Resort Association Chamber Board of Directors, serve on that Board of Directors, serve on the Resort Association's multiple citizen committees that advise the Board in its decision-making uh, processes, 
and then attend the educational and social functions designed to achieve the purposes for which the organization was formed and lastly they raise funding to the chamber in that the uh, chamber of commerce is not uh, utilizing p o t funds as defined in our an annual agreement with placer county the resort association works to improve tourism development to increase our main objective of uh, putting more heads on beds. This occurs really in three ways. One, bringing new visitors to the area. A second is that visitors stay longer once they're here because of the facilities that are available. And third then, of course, and probably just as important, if not more important, that visitors uh, return to this area when they are going to celebrate their next vacation conference or meeting. After a uh, record year in TOT collections in 07 and 08, there was this general economic uh, downturn, of course, in 08, 09, and uh, the TOTs dropped, not real significantly, but significantly for uh, the situation we had been in where there hadn't been a drop in TOTs, always going up. Um, but as we moved um, into the uh, winter of last year, after a, a first quarter of 09-10 kind of continued the same trend, um, we, uh, the TOT collection started to level out. And once again, as the winter and the spring came through, headed upward with a, a very good ending to the year. In fact, uh, I don't have the actual finals, but it looks like it's probably the second best TOT year ever. To uh, keep those heads coming, to fill those beds, requ requires our coordinated uh, effort of tourism activities, visitor services, and capital improvements in tourism related uh, to infrastructure development. These uh, tourism activities, which we have provided this last year, include marketing and promotion, which is a variety of print media insertions, uh, radio campaigns, the snow trigger program, which gave us the opportunity as the weather changed to change our ability to advertise what was happening on the ground here at North Lake Tahoe. Our year-round uh, travel planners, the AAA tour book, the internet uh, services that we offer, and the web campaigns. There, then we have our cooperative mo marketing programs, which we do, which is working with the Wedding and Honeymoon Association, regional marketing committees, hotel travel index, Mountain Travel Research Project, the uh, California Snow Program, as well as the uh, North Lake Tahoe San Diego Winter Ski Campaign that we did last year that was highly successful in bringing many San Diegoans up here. Fortunately, not the Padres. <laughs> um, in our public, uh, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> in our public relations, we. Uh, handle just a multitude of uh, press releases to keep people aware of what's happening at the moment up here. Uh, we handle media inquiries from all over the world. We host visiting journalists and also sending press kit materials to uh, really pique the interest of people that are uh, then considering and coming to North Lake Tahoe. In our special events and projects that I uh, just spoke about with uh, Judy being an active participant in this, we actively partner with and support various ongoing and first-time events through our community grants programs where small organizations and uh, new groups can apply for funding to try to get a, a new event off the ground. And um, then we provide marketing and funding assistance to the five business associations of North Lake Tahoe. We get certain events that we're behind. We not only provide funding, but do promotion for them. This year's new ones being the Quicksilver uh, Tahoe Stand Up Paddleboard Festival. We participated in the 50th anniversary of the Olympic Heritage Celebration. Snowfest is a continuing um, event that we sponsor. And this coming spring will be its 30th year of being a part of the North Lake Tahoe scene. Um, we then also do some development of resort association produced events, such as this summer's High Notes, which was a regional uh, wide music promotion. And of course, the 25th annual Autumn Food and Wine Festival that occurred in uh, September. 
leisure sales is another area that we put a lot of effort into last year, and that's really educating the uh, call center agents, product managers, and wholesalers from the travel trade all over the world. Um, this, the amount of money spent hosting and visiting these agents or other countries is really quite um, a limited, uh, small amount of money, especially if you look at the, the amount of money that's leveraged um, hundreds if not thousands of times on what those people then do with their outreach and the people that they bring here. Conference sales has always been a, a strong point, except for the last year and a half, uh, where it's usually the strongest in the months of July through November. And the way the economy turned down in the uh, 08, 09 year, um, where the whole year was off, and then it continued in the first half of 09, 010, that was the strong part of the conferencing. So in the weaker months for conferencing, which are the, the second half of the fiscal year, the January to June, are not normally strong for conferencing anyway. So even though we started to have a reversal in that time, conferencing again stayed low last year. But this year already, we have come up with a, the amount of conferencing that has totally outdone what last year's total year was. So there's um, a real turn in the efforts that our conferencing department is putting forth and uh, an indication that some of the, the economy uh, that has been a, a problem is uh, changing for us. Our, our last um, section of the, uh, the, the tourism activities is our visitor information services. And we have a year-round visitor center in Tahoe City and then we do a summer visitor information center at the beach North Lake Tahoe Beach, uh, across the street from Safeway in the Kings Beach area. Both of those uh, visitations, the number of contacts, picked up in the second half of the 09-10 year, uh, as, as did the general visitation here. And so we saw an improvement again of the number of people coming in. The second uh, part of this triage that I mentioned um, is visitor services. and. The visitor service is sponsored by the uh, Resort Association of prim primarily transportation-related partnerships with CART, uh, Tahoe Transportation District, the uh, Truckee North Tahoe uh, Transportation Management Association, California Highway Patrol, and uh, private companies. The services that we provided in 0910 was um, uh, a supplemental funding for CART baseline services. The, with some of the money that was withheld by the state from from the county, it started shorting, as you all know, the, the, the potential for our baseline services. And before we, we could do the enhancements that are our normal uh, opportunity, we felt we needed to, to put funding toward the baseline to maintain that part of the system. And so that's what we did last year, and that's what we're doing this year. But already this year, there is some recovery so that there isn't as much money of the, the enhancement transportation going to the baseline services. Uh, we have continued with the seasonal enhancements um, to the baseline services. That's where we start running something on a 30-minute basis rather than the normal year-round hourly service. And uh, we have some earlier and some later uh, routes because of the greater number of employees in the busy times of the year. We also are continuing to fund at a decreasing level because of the success of the, the service, the North Lake Tahoe Express, which is the Reno Tahoe Airport service. And that each year that we've been involved with that has been a lesser amount of um, supplemental funds, subsidies that we've been putting into that. Winter and summer nighttime shuttles is a very important aspect to our getting people out of the cars and keeping them out of the cars um, safely and to lessen the transportation. So they run in both the high seasons, winter and summer, and uh, as I said, keep a lot of cars off of the roads that otherwise shouldn't be on the roads at those times of night. Skier shuttles will continue to be something that we provide more of and uh, supplemental funds too. 
and uh, lastly, we do traffic management control, and this is during periods of congestion where we actually have companies and the California Highway Patrol out on the roads to help ease the traffic congestion at those peak times. The uh, amount of money that we put into the uh, transportation services last year was about $1.38 million. The third piece of the integrated approach to putting the heads on the beds is the making of uh, capital improvements to the tourism-related um, infrastructure development. As you know, over the years, the Resort Association has invested almost $19 million to help leverage with partners over $150 million toward projects such as the bike trails, beach improvements, commercial core improvement projects, visitor interpretive centers, et cetera. The, uh, this past year, just under $2 million TOT dollars was approved and or allocated for things such as the Lakeside Multipurpose Trail, the North Star Community Multipurpose Trail, the US, uh, UC Davis Historic Fish Hatchery Environmental Center, the Olympic and Far West Ski Museum planning, traffic calming devices such as the radar signs you see on the road and the pedestrian markers in the, in the middle of the road. Um, in addition, there was the transportation center that we've seen here a couple times today and, and um, uh, two uh, new bus shelters in Squaw Valley. The bus shelter program has become, a, a, I think, a very successful blend of uh, uh, Peter's uh, DPW and the Resort Association, and our plans on that is to, are to move through the shelters either replacing or building new ones in places where they're needed. During the current 10-11 uh, fiscal year, the Resort Association will continue with these activities with emphasis on the North Lake Tahoe overall biking plan, uh, planning for the bike trail missing links, achieving the bike-friendly community stature that's a national and international program of which we received an honorable mention this year, but this year we will uh, move up and above that honorable mention into one of those multicolored medals you can get when you get near the top. <laughs> we will um, move ahead more so with the uh, wayfinding signage, which eases the ability to get around the area. We're going to continue our planning for the performing arts facilities, planning for the existing uh, Tahoe City Fire Station replacement, uh, continue with the funding for the uh, commercial core improvement project, continuation of the bus shelter replacements, as I mentioned, working with partners to make transportation more seamless as we can, uh, can aff afford to do that. We're going to be preparing the surveys and the education materials for the TOT renewal effort that's now uh, coming underway for the, uh, the renewal of TOT, which expires in October of 2012. And um, also uh, continue to assess, assist the business um, associations and others in the promotion of new event establishment. We will continue with our appropriate and strategic marketing. And lastly, uh, we're going to seek out, plan, and promote marquee events that will have an uh, immediate positive impact on the North Lake Tahoe uh, area and uh, all of Placer County and to demonstrate uh, that kind of event, I'd like to close out with Andy Chapman giving a, a preview of what the Resort Association, through working with partners, is bringing to North Lake Tahoe in the spring of 2011. Sure. Thank you. Good afternoon, Andy. Good afternoon, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Mueller and uh, Board of Supervisors, and welcome to Lake Tahoe. Uh, we certainly would like to have you guys up here, and it's good to have you in our neck of the woods. Um, let me make sure that this is all working the way it should. So um, Amgen, I don't think it's any new announcement. It's been out there for at least 14 days or so. Uh, but I did want to thank the Board of Supervisors for your support in this endeavor, and particularly uh, Jennifer uh, Montgomery, Tom Miller, and uh, Jennifer Merchant, and all the NLTRA Board of Directors as well. This was a huge event to go after. Uh, in our opinion, it's uh, probably the largest event since the 1960 Winter Olympics in means of promotion, outreach, awareness that we're going to gain. I'll just talk for a couple of minutes about the process and I'll end with a uh, little bit of a video that demonstrates uh, the upcoming event. 
Uh, we've been in uh, the bid process and discussions with AEG, which is the event organizers, for the last uh, year, maybe year and a half. Uh, as you may know, this event was uh, shifted from February to May uh, of last year, and last year was the first time it was in May. And I know it allowed the race, the start of last year's race from Nevada City to Sacramento, travel me to the Great Roads of Placer County on the uh, western side. So we're very interested and looking forward to having them come up here for uh, the eastern side of that experience. Um, we did this process with the Lake Tahoe Visitors Authority, which is our counterpart marketing firm on the South Shore. It was very important for the race organizers and ourselves, ourselves to collectively portray one bid process for, for this event. And like I say, the uh, process went on for about a year and a half. Uh, we knew a little bit before the announcement on October 7th that we had received it as contracts had to be signed and negotiated and such. But uh, we did get the race. The uh, quick overview on the race, uh, it'll start May 15th in uh, South Lake Tahoe, somewhere near the state line. It'll travel clockwise around Lake Tahoe one and a half times, which for the first time will bring it into the state of Nevada. And the race organizers are very excited about that. Uh, it will then come to uh, Highway 267 at Kings Beach and travel up and over Brockway Summit and end at uh, North Star. The, uh, the exact race uh, course and where it's going to end and where it's going to climb is still up to the organizers, but most likely it will climb up and around the Ritz Road with a finish at uh, the North Star Village. Day two will uh, shift over to a start to begin at uh, Squaw Valley and uh, start there go down 89 to Truckee, a couple loops around Truckee, and then up and over old Highway 40, go right by uh, Jennifer Montgomery's house there, had a party that morning in front of her, uh, <laughs> in front of her porch, um, on its way to Sacramento. So it will travel about three and a half miles on uh, Interstate 80 before it jumps back onto Highway 20 and will make its way to Sacramento. I know uh, you also are uh, very well aware, I'm sure, that day three will begin in Auburn, uh, as it makes its way to a Modesto finish that evening. So it is a, an eight-day stage. Um, the reason why we looked at doing something like this was the economic impact of an event of, uh, of this uh, magnitude. And there's three things that we, I really look at of this type of event. It's the promotion and awareness leading up to the event. You know, there's a lot of awareness. There's a lot of hype. It is the largest biking race in uh, North America, and it is one of the largest in the country. One of the reasons, going back a little bit, about why they switched the date to May, obviously one was to get to the better weather and to the higher elevations of the Sierra. That's a given. But the second outcome of that was a direct competition with the Giro d'Italia. So it's in direct competition with that race. It happens at the same time. So they have to have a race that pulls the riders that they want. They experienced that this last year and are very confident that they will continue with that. As a little side note, I, I, uh, I like this story. Uh, J uh, Julie Maurer, who is uh, at North Star, was in Italy uh, riding, do, doing the race last year. And it rained or snowed every single day. And at the end of that race, on TV, the Tour of California would come on. <laughs> and it was sunny skies, beautiful weather, <laughs> beaches and mountains. So it, it, was, it was a nice, uh, nice uh, option. So you know, leading up to the event is a very important economic impact. Obviously, the, uh, day, the, uh, the event itself, and right now we're working on some type of a 10-day countdown to the tu Tahoe Tour, uh, probably starting on Cinco de Mayo. So really building what that 10-day period is for the race to come up here. Uh, there's a large gala, there's a lifestyle festivals, there's um, participation races that are going on. Uh, we're looking at bringing maybe a women's criterium at that same time maybe a hand-cranked race. There's a lot of uh, different uh, activities that we're looking at bringing. So during the event, very important as well, heads and beds, as, as Ron mentioned. And then the long-term benefit and exposure that a, a bike race of this will bring to the destination. Kind of solidifies us as a biking destination, and to Ron's point about a bike-friendly community, this will be one of the feathers in the cap as we go to approach that higher designation. So I uh, want to, again, just to end, and I can answer any questions after the video, but again, we just appreciate the opportunity uh, and the support we've had from the board. Uh, book your rooms now for <laughs> May 15th. I was talking to Alan Heidfeld from the Ritz. He said the day that they announced it, the phone started ringing. So obviously that's one of the outcomes that we want. And if I can, just a couple, I think it's about a three-minute video. I have to do a high tech. I have to hold this to the speaker so that everyone can see. Come back to. Now, how's this to start the 2011 Amgen Tour of California? One of America's most spectacular cycling meccas is proud to host America's largest cycling event. South Lake Tahoe looks forward to sharing our home and roadways 
let the engine tour begin. Welcome, Amgen Tour of California to North Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe, the jewel of the Sierra, is a recreational paradise. The adrenaline-fueled Stage 1 finish at North Star at Tahoe Resort will be filled with the pungent smell of fresh pine, sweat, and lycra. The Stage 2 start at Squaw Valley, USA, home of the 1960 Winter Olympics, showcases majestic peaks and medal-winning athletes of past and present. North Lake Tahoe, take your breath away. The second stage of the 2011 Amgen Tour of California will finish in front of a familiar but always picturesque backdrop, the stately Capitol Building. A quarter million spectators have filled Sacramento streets since the race first came to California's capital city in 2007, including an estimated crowd of 100,000 in 2010 when British star Mark Cabot won a stage win. stage start Tuesday, May 17th, 2011. This is Mayor Jim Ridenauer in Modesto, home of George Lucas and American Speedy. We're looking forward to Amgen Tour of California cruising through Modesto on Tuesday, May 17th. Hello, I'm Mayor Marshall Camino with the City of Livermore. And I'm thrilled that we've been selected by Amgen Tour of California as a start stage host city for Wednesday, May 18th. Livermore is home to the oldest wine country in California and boasts over 80 miles of bike trails. Our award-winning downtown throws a great party, so we look forward to welcoming you to Livermore, California. City of Seaside, California is proud to be the host city of the 2011 Amgen Stage 5 start. The start takes place on May 19th in beautiful Seaside as the race heads down the California coast. mentioned to my board that they should be happy I didn't ask them to do that.
with that, uh, again, thank you very much. And uh, just in closing, I kind of think back to a conversation I had with Mr. Miller and Squaw a while back about this race when we first started talking about it. And it was uh, go get it was the uh, message. And so thanks for your support. We're happy to have it and look forward to seeing you guys all on the race course next year. The city of Davis will not be happy about it. <laughs> no, <laughs> that really doesn't matter. Yeah, that's too bad. They understand. I mean, we, we, we will certainly bid again on portions of it. Um, and we will may at some point be in that same situation, but for eight days in all of California, it definitely has to move around. And there is some discussion about reversing the course, going from Southern California to Northern California, and potentially as quick as 2013, and we're very keen and already in discussions about a potential finish of what that would look like up here for the whole race, so. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer. Yes, what, what, um, what I'm particularly excited about on this, aside from the fact that it's three days in Placer County, which is exciting in and of itself, but is the fact that here at the lake, we're gonna have people here for two nights. I mean, because people are gonna have to come for the opening stage, and instead of having the second day start at some remote city that you have to then drive to and check into a different hotel room, people are gonna be staying in the area. So we're gonna see some additional benefits out of this that you know, some of these other uh, cities and, and areas might not have, and that's just so exciting to me because it's gonna give people an opportunity to not just see the race, but to spend some actual time here in the lake because the race, as you know, goes by like, <laughs> wait. Where'd they go? You know, so it's 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 a real opportunity for for Placer County and, and and the rest of the folks here at the lake as well. And I'm just thank you so much for all your hard work on this. It's just a wonderful outcome, and I have my fingers crossed. Thank you. Yeah, and we we certainly hope to drive uh, even the, more than the two night stay and everything that we're building. So I'm expecting that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Mr. Miller, and if I could just add to that, I know that without the resort association, this would not have occurred because they have got all the resorts together. They have, I mean, you have to things, you have to organize things, you have to do a lot to capture this. And if we did not have uh, the Resort Association, it would, no chance. So, great work. And, and hats off to all of our lodging partners and everybody in the community because they understand the importance of it because it is quite an undertaking, both financially and the lodging perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We could substitute more canes. Ah, <laughs> um, Mr. Morlatos, uh, any comments you'd like to offer on behalf of the board? And Alex Morlatos, current chair of the Chamber of Commerce and Resort Association boards. I actually, the comment I had was, uh, gee, how far we've come in the six years that I've been on this board, and, so, and this is probably my last time officially addressing you as chair. Uh, my how far we've come as a resort association, as a redevelopment agency that, you know, finally celebrated that golden shovel in the ground today on housing, and uh, not to mention a DPW that's integrated into everything the resort association does, as well as redevelopment, how far we've come. Thank you. And it's because of you, because of you, because of all of them, and great staff. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Okay, any other comments by board members? Any members of the public wish to address the board on anything that's been presented here today? Okay, board does have a couple of closed session items we're gonna go into and then uh, it's also publicly noticed that we will be attending a reception this evening at five o'clock at uh, 475 North Lake Boulevards Uncorked, I believe is the name of the business. And then we'll be back here tomorrow morning at nine o'clock to take up uh, regular items of the Board of Supervisors. You're all welcome to come back then too. Uh, with that, we will be uh, adjourning to closed session right now, and council will report what the items will take up. The board will take up the items on page two of its agenda. Item five, there's A, conference with real property negotiator, B, conference with labor negotiators, and item C, which was added at the beginning of today's session, anticipated litigation. Thank you all. We will see you later. And the board will report out when closed session is yes. done.